Hello, ladies and gentlemen. Once again, this is Jeremy Smith. It's been a little while since I've given Canon some love, and uh, a lot of people have been asking me about how to set up their Wi-Fi on their Canon cameras. And of course, I've brought you guys lots and lots of Nikon and Sony videos. So while I have my hands on the EOS R, which is something else I need to talk to you guys about, I decided that I would go ahead and make a quick little video talking about Canon's Wi-Fi setup. Now, I've played with this for a little while, um, the thing I've noticed though is these wireless uh, sort of setup processes on cameras are constantly evolving. So as always, I do have 2019 in the description of this video because as we've seen already, um, Nikon SnapBridge, for example, has now evolved and the Sony system continues to evolve. So if you're watching this video sometime in the future, be aware of what time it was actually made. Um, so yeah, this video may be outdated, but just rest assured, if I notice changes, I will be making another video in the future with an appropriate date to let you guys know that this is the updated version. Um, anyways, also keep an eye on the comments because a lot of times I'll pin a comment at the top if there's a change that doesn't necessarily dictate making an entirely new video. So anyways, keep all that in mind. But let's dive right into this. I have the EOS R turned on right now. So basically what we do here is we go into our menu and in the menu here in our setup, there is going to be an option for the wireless settings. So let's say we keep on going over and there it is right there. It says wireless communication settings. <clears throat> we select this option. Now there are a few other things you can do with this. For example, if you go down to Wi-Fi function, I'm going to go in here and select this. And you notice there's other things we can do. We can transfer to a smartphone, we can transfer to a computer, we can go to a printer, we can even go to a web service. In a future video, I will be talking to you guys about how I tailor to computers. Short answer is, as of this point in 2019, it's not something that I do wirelessly. I still feel like right now, wireless has its limitations when going to a computer. But anyways, that's for a future video. So for the time being, we're going to be centering our attention on how to transfer images to a smartphone. So anyways, there's a couple ways you can do this. Now, the thing I've noticed is some Canon cameras have Bluetooth built in and some of the older models do not have Bluetooth built in. I'm going to start with the easy setup, assuming that your camera has Bluetooth built in. So what we do here is, if we go in here, I actually recommend before you even go to that Wi-Fi function, go in here and go to this Bluetooth function and enable it. So we're gonna go in here and it says remote and it says smartphone. Now, <clears throat> for a little while I thought, what on heck, what, what on heck, what in the heck is this remote setting for? <clears throat> it's not for the remote option for your smartphone. It's actually for the Bluetooth remote that Canon makes. So if you have one of those, that's basically what this is for. But for the purpose of going to a smartphone, even if you're wanting to use a smartphone as remote control, we would still go to the smartphone option right here. So we select this <clears throat> and it says smartphone there. Then we go to pairing, just like this. Now, if you go to this option right here to display a QR code, unlike on some cameras where <clears throat> this sort of automates the process, this QR code actually just takes you to, at least on an iPhone, it just takes you to a link, so that way you can go ahead and download the app. If you want to do that, you can. So I can kind of show you how this works. iOS. So if I get my phone here, you can see once it detects the QR code, it does display this option right here to go to the App Store. And if I tap on that, it will go ahead and take me to the app in App Store. Now, I've already gotten this app installed on this phone, so I don't need to do that. Instead of doing that, I'm going to go ahead and go over to my app, just like this, and that basically opens up like this. So you don't have to use this QR code, it just takes you to that app. So I'm going to go back to the camera now and go to Do Not Display. And basically I have uh, the Bluetooth on the phone turned on, so it immediately finds my camera. So if I tap on EOS R, little pairing request pops up like that. And you guys will notice that I immediately get the option to pair it. So we'll go to pair like that. And now the camera 
wants to know if it's okay to pick up this phone, so I can say okay. And then after that, it's all done. So at this point, we have everything set up pretty easily. Um, now, the thing is that Bluetooth is sort of just used for an initial connection, um, and it's used to like get location data and things like that. The Bluetooth connection cannot transfer uh, images and it cannot really do any remote shooting. So the moment you go in and say that you want to do something like uh, the uh, like view the images on the camera, if you tap on this right here, it will then prompt you to go ahead and connect via Wi-Fi. But as you can see, Canon, they've actually done a good job of automating this process. So anyways, it jumps up on the uh, phone here and asks me to join that particular Wi-Fi network, which is the camera. I go to join right there and it continues on with the connection process. So after a few moments here, it will connect to the camera. And this makes it much easier. You know, you don't have to go in here and type in any type of passcode or anything like that. And boom, it's done. <laughs> so much, much easier process than the past. You guys can see that now I am viewing the images that are on the phone. So everything works just as it should there. So that's how that works out, pretty straightforward. Um, if I wanted to go in here and download anything, oh yes, and by the way, we are shooting in RAW on the uh, EOS R right now. The cool thing about this is, if we do go ahead and transfer any of these images, the camera will automatically uh, convert these to JPEG. This is something that I noticed that Nikon's SnapBridge stops doing for some reason, but it does not work that way, thankfully, on the Canon app. We're still able to go in here and uh, download images. If you do put it onto the original size, it will transfer that RAW file at the original 30 megapixels, but it will not be RAW. It will still convert to JPEG. Otherwise, you can uh, transfer a lower quality JPEG. So still no ability to transfer the RAW file, but at least you don't have to shoot in RAW plus JPEG like you do on the Nikon SnapBridge app. So as you can see, it works out pretty well. I'm able to go ahead and save this. If I were to go to my camera roll, it would now be present there as well. Whenever we go back, we also have the option of going in here and doing some remote live view shooting if we wanted to. We can tap on that right there. And I have the 51.2 lens on this. It's quite heavy right now. But you guys can see, we are now seeing what the camera is seeing. And I can go in here and I can tap and take photographs like that. I can also go in here and I can do things like control my settings. So if I want to go in here and change any of my settings, the camera is in manual mode right now. <clears throat> so I can go over and I can change things like my shutter speed. You can see that I am getting an exposure preview in real time here, which is pretty sweet. I can do things like uh, I can tap to focus. Do you hear that, Sony? I can actually tap to focus. <laughs> Sony really needs to bring that functionality back. But yeah, you guys can see how all this works out pretty well. You know, you can go in here. It's pretty, pretty lag free. We can change everything. So a pretty useful app. And I can capture images pretty quickly too. So it works out really, really well. So that's basically the functionality we have here. If you do not have Bluetooth on your particular Canon camera, this is how you want to go ahead and set it up instead. So what you'll do is you'll basically start out the same way we did before. You'll go into your camera menu and you'll go into these wireless communication settings. And basically you won't have the Bluetooth option here. So you'll just go to your Wi-Fi settings instead. And then you will simply enable the Wi-Fi. And you can decide if you want to have a password here or not. I'm going to elect to leave this on. And then we'll go down to Wi-Fi function. So like that, it wants you to register a nickname for your camera if you haven't done so already. I'm gonna just go with the standard defaults EOS R here. So I'll press the menu button to go okay there. And so now it tells us that that has been saved. Okay, so we can go to okay there. And so now it's going to be saved. And then we'll go in here and select the option for our smartphone, just like that. And then we'll go to register a device for a connection. 
And again, we get the option to um, display that QR code if we need to get that quick link to the app download, but otherwise, <clears throat> I'm going to assume that you already have that app downloaded on your phone. The app is called Canon Camera Connect, by the way. So otherwise, I'm gonna go here and I'm going to go to Do Not Display. And so now, before you even open up this app, this is the key. You will just go in here to your Wi-Fi. And then on this particular Wi-Fi list, you're going to see your camera show up there. So I'm gonna go ahead and select the um, camera here. And then I'm gonna just type in the passcode that it gives me by default. So let's see here, it's gonna be, in this case, 979. Zero one four one seven, and then after I do that, I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to tap join. Now you'll you guys will notice that they'll start to connect at this point. So once that happens, this is going to be the time where you want to go ahead and open up your Canon app. So once you have your Canon app open, it will immediately pop up with the camera. So then we basically go in here and we just tap on the camera. And as soon as we do that, back over on the camera screen, the camera basically wants to know if it's okay to connect to the iPhone. We'll say okay. It'll take a couple moments. Then you'll get that little check mark displayed on your smartphone screen. And that lets us know that at this point, everything has been successfully connected. And from there, it's basically business as usual. You know, you go to the same options here. We still have the option to go to images on camera. Um, we still have our option to go in here and do our remote shooting and so on. So basically everything is still exactly the way it was before. So that's how it works out. A lot of people make the mistake if they have a non-Bluetooth Bluetooth enabled camera of opening up the app first I find it much easier to just go ahead and make that Wi-Fi connection in the settings on your phone first and then open the app and things work out much better. A couple of things you see in this app in addition to this, there is some location information here. <clears throat> so you can actually go in here and have the camera sort of request location data from your phone. The app does warn you that you will drain through your phone battery at a very, very quick pace if you do so, but you do have that option. I have a much better solution of getting Wi-Fi data, uh, and this will work with any camera. Uh, if you haven't seen my video on that, give it, a, give it a watch. It's an old video, but the information is still applicable today. And this is how I actually prefer to get Bluetooth data without draining my phone battery using these apps. So check out that video and you guys may find that useful. A Couple other things we have in here. There's some camera settings. Um, one thing I do like to do also is I like to go in here and actually have the camera get the date and time information from the phone. This can be really useful when you're traveling and such because it will update everything with the local time. So that can be pretty useful there. If you turn that option on, you can set to camera and then they'll sort of sync. So that's really cool. And let's see, uh, there's also an option in here to where you can have a constant always on connection Let's see, as a matter of fact, ah, oh, there it is. There's our auto transfer. So you can go in here and you can turn that on. This is something I haven't really played with a whole lot. Um, it more than likely will drain a lot of battery life. Most of you will probably find that you end up transferring your information uh, whenever you choose to. But if you did want to go ahead and, and do, uh, have it transfer sort of automatically, you can do that. So yeah, pretty, pretty straightforward app all in all. Um, the camera companies did a brilliant job of starting to introduce these features on cameras. Obviously, they still have a long way to go. Um, I'm frankly, am surprised that no camera company hasn't just put a, you know, LTE connection directly in the camera. I mean, I think that would be so much easier. It's probably going to be the next evolution. Uh, what do you guys think? Do you think that you would actually benefit from having a LTE connection built into your camera where you could send pictures just straight off without having to pair it to a phone at all? Write me in the comments below and let me know what you think about that. I'm curious to get some additional thoughts. Um, I personally, you know, being the techie I am, I think that would be really awesome. 
Anyways though, if you guys have any other questions, also, be, uh, also feel free to write those in the comments as well. I may not have a chance to respond to every single one, but I definitely always read those. Also be sure to follow me on all social media where I am known as Photog J the Great because uh, yeah, um, I think that I'm I think that I'm pretty great. Even if you can't see me today, trust me, I am actually quite great. Until next time, this is Jeremy Smith signing off.